Welcome or welcome back to the Therapy by Craft podcast channel, YouTube channel. Is this a podcast? I don't know. Let's try that again. Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Therapy by Craft YouTube channel. My name is Eunice. I am the maker and the host behind Therapy by Craft. And y'all, it's been a minute. Like, it's been a long minute. <laughs> I feel like it's been, I feel like it's been um, 100 years since the last time I've spoken to you guys. But really, I think it's only been, oh, actually, it's been just over a year. Yeah. And then I looked it up, and the last time I recorded, was or no 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 the last time i posted a video was june 13th of 2023 yeah which is nuts today is june 18th tuesday june 18th of 2024 so yeah it's been just over a year since the last time we spoke how are you how are you doing <laughs> how have you guys been um i have not stopped knitting since the last time we talked, but there is no way that I'm going to be able to catch you guys up on all the things that I've been making, so I'm not. <laughs> um, instead, I thought that I would share with you guys the things that I've been most excited about lately because I have been very, very excited about two types of projects in particular. For those of you guys who follow me on Instagram, I'm sure you guys have already seen my obsession with sock knitting and muscle barrel hat knitting as of late. So that's what I decided I'm going to be talking about as my, what is this? My comeback? I don't know, re-debut? I don't know what this is, but as my return <laughs> to the YouTube sphere. sphere. Um, for those of you who don't know, I also have a Ravelry project page. Um, I go by Therapy by Craft on there as well. Therapy by Craft on Instagram. Um, most of the things that I will talk about, I will have had project pages for. I think all of the things that I've made, I will have project pages for. So um, that can be found in the show notes below. And gosh, I'm so out of practice, but bear with me. Uh, the last episode that I posted was like my barely edited thing, like uh, episode a long, long time ago. And I realized that none of you guys really care about how edited a video is. It seems like the general consensus has been, yo, just talk and we'll listen. Um, and if we don't want to, then we'll move on. And that's totally fine. I think what kind of burnt me out before was the editing part of the video. It's like, God, I hate editing so much. Talking to you about the things that are interesting to me, talking to you about the things that are really exciting, whatever, like that I can do all day. But the editing, ugh, I hate it. I hate it with a passion. So I think this time around, I'm just gonna talk and yeah, we'll see how that goes. I, I want to make, make it so that I don't have to edit all that much in hopes that that will allow me the energy and the mental, emotional space to continue making these videos for you guys. Um, yeah let's see is there anything else i wanted to say about that i don't know oh if the audio is a little bit weird too um in the spirit of making things easier for me i'm also recording on my phone i used to have like a little i don't know point and shoot digital camera or whatever that was a little bit better in terms of video quality but man that thing shut me off every 15 minutes like that was a max the maximum um the maximum number of minutes that I could record at a time. And that just made it really hard, especially for someone like me who just wants to talk and talk and talk and talk. And then I have to like, oh my gosh, okay. And then again, of course, that would be more editing for me. So anyway, this might be a new vibe. This might be a new feel. I'm really interested to see how many of you guys choose to stick around, how many of you guys are new and are more excited about this kind of content. I don't know. 
But um, I've been going on and on about that for five minutes now. So we'll go ahead and get started. I hope you have um, something to drink or at least um, a project to work on while you're hearing me chat and chat. Um, maybe put a progress marker where you're at right now. Let's see how far you get. <laughs> okay. Mm. So, like I said, I have been obsessed with two particular kinds of projects these days. And so instead of uh, doing my normal format of finished objects and the works in progress and plans for future, I am going to just organize this video based on those two projects. The first being the muscle bra hat and my journey of becoming obsessed with this pattern and my socks because I am also obsessed with my socks. Um, let's start with the muscle bro. I have recently made, I've made five in total, but I have four of them with me here. And most of these are actually going to be gifts. So I figured if I wanna talk about them and show them to you without having to like edit in pictures, then I gotta do this now. But here, I remember muscle bear hats, or at least the most, yeah, this is, this is, there we go. Um, most of these, no, all of these, so the muscle bear hat pattern is by Isolde Teague, and it is a beanie pattern that kind of exploded a couple years ago. I forget when the pattern released, but since its release, it's just been a very popular go-to pattern for so many people and for good reason um it is kind of like a mm, set your not set your gauge as you go but you measure out your gauge after you do a couple of you know after you work on it for a bit and so it can be used for for it can be used for i think like fingering weight all the way to worsted weight something like that am i wrong i don't know but a, you can use a wide range of yarn weights for the beanie. You can make it in certain like different kinds of styles. You can wear them different ways. You can have it with a folded brim or without a folded brim. What's really great is that it's pretty much straight stockinette for the majority of the project. So it's a wonderful like mid, uh, meeting knit where you can just knit, 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 knit. It's a great road trip knit. It's very mindless. And I think that's part of the reason why I was really obsessed with it. So when it was released a couple years ago, I did try to make it then. Um, I tried making one for my brother and it was a disaster. <laughs> it was so awful. <laughs> and I hope that my experience, okay, so I want to share with you the story of what had happened. And I think it'll hit the common problems that a lot of people have with this pattern um, and then because yeah, like the first time I attempted this, there are two things about it that I really hated. One was the cast on, which if you know anything about this pattern, I'm sure you've heard about that before. It starts with like a very small number of stitches. You put it on DPNs according to the pattern and God, it's just so finicky. I abhor DPNs. I hate DPNs. DPNs stand for double pointed needles. I hate them. I really, really don't like them. I try to avoid them at all costs. Um, I am a magic loop girly. I am not a DPN girly. And so when I um, saw how popular the muscle bra hat was, it really took a lot <laughs> for me to commit to trying it out with the DPNs. I did. It was I, like, I didn't hate it. Well, no, I did. I absolutely hated it. But it was and I, I was determined to make the hat and to fall in love with it. So I plowed forward. So that was like roadblock number one. Then I got to a point where um, the pattern tells you to, to work in pattern until you have enough fabric for you to swatch and, and, and check your gauge. You only need about an inch worth because that's, kind of the gauge that the pattern uses, like how many stitches per inch, like that's what the pattern uses. And I thought, okay, cool. I measured it. I found out how many stitches per inch 
I had. I followed the pattern directions the way that it instructed me for the gauge that I got. And it ended up being like a tent. It was so big. It was humongous. I was using, I think I was using like a gray color and looked like a trash bag. <laughs> I was making this for my brother and it straight up looked like, I don't know what, but it looked ridiculous. It looked like a freaking, yeah, like one of those like heavy duty trash bags that you put on like five gallon trash bins. It looked awful. And what I should have done at that time was measured the gauge that I had um, at the like the body of the beanie or whatever, but I did not. I was so discouraged. I was so angry and frustrated with this pattern that I just, I was just like, screw it. I don't want to do this anymore. And then I put it aside. Fast forward to about like a year and a half or two years later, and I wanted to make this beanie again because I was looking to make a beanie for somebody who was incredibly knit worthy. And what I knew was that they wanted a hat that was very warm, I, uh, that was kind of snug, but not too snug, that fit really well, that basically had all the qualities that the muscle bro like promises. <laughs> so I thought, Ugh, okay, let me go ahead and try this again. I ran into similar problems, but because I was watching Nitty Natty at the time, Natalie of Nitty Natty, um, she has this cast on called the crochet cast on, like the, cro yeah, the crochet cast on. And I, I watched that tutorial and I figured, you know what? I think I could do that. I can do that and do a magic loop instead of the double pointed needles. So that solved problem number one. I cast it on. It was okay. I didn't really like the look of the little cinched part of that cast on. But the process was a much more enjoyable process. So I figured, okay, let's keep going and see what happens. But then I ran into that second problem again. I measured my gauge and then I followed the directions for the gauge that I got. I think um, I got like seven stitches per inch. So I followed the directions for seven stitches per inch and it turned out to be humongous again. I was so upset because I've been working and working and working on this hat, being so, so excited that like, oh, I finally got over the cast on hurdle. This is gonna be a success. Nah, it was so big. It, it was like, like, yes, it just looked really, really strange. But this time I measured the gauge for the body of my hat and realized, oh, the problem is that my tension when I, cast on and do the crown portion of the beanie is tighter than the body, the straight stockinette in the round portion of, of the beanie. It was a whole stitch off, meaning when I measured my gauge at the crown of my beanie, I was getting seven stitches per inch, but at the body of the beanie, like the majority of the beanie, it was six stitches per inch. So no wonder it was this like humongous thing. It wasn't working out because my tension at the crown and my tension at the body of the beanie, it was not the same. And here's, and if you guys are not familiar with the muscle bro, let me show you what I mean by the crown and the body. So the beanie is actually a long, long tube like this, which is what gives it its warmth because it's double layered or quadruple layered, depending on whether or not you have a folded brim. But this part here is the crown, right here. And this is what I'm referring to as the body. Now, right here is where you're supposed to measure your, um, your gauge to figure out how many stitches you need to have for this part of the hat. That's why I kept running into problems because this gauge is a lot tighter than this gauge. So once I figured that out, I ripped out the beanie. I used the gauge that I knew I would get for the quote body of the beanie. And that's when the heavens opened up and angels came down. And it was like a ah! moment because then it fit so beautifully. And it was amazing. <laughs> so I feel like that those two things really unlocked for me, my love for the muscle bro. It took a couple years, but I'm so glad 
that when it happened, it finally happened because obviously like I'm obsessed. I made so many. Um, so if you are someone who have heard about the muscle bro and really avoided making one because you ran into maybe some of the similar problems that I had, I would highly encourage you to measure the gauge of the like body portion of the beanie and not the crown. Um, it might take a bit of ripping back, but I promise you it's so worth it because now I have my magic numbers. I make all of my muscle burrows in a US size, US four needle, which is a 3.5 millimeter, millimeter needle. <laughs> Why did I lose my words just then? I know it's a 3.5 millimeter needle. And I have found that depending on um, whether my yarn is a fingering weight or a light fingering weight, I get about six to seven stitches per inch. So this and the other, the first muscle burrow I successfully finished is made out of Explorer Fiber Knits um, Earthy Sock Non Superwash Fingering Weight Yarn. This is in the color weight Pollen. The first one that I made is in the colorway Tawny, which is a beautiful, like, like brown, burnt caramel, I don't know, like amber kind of color. It was so, so beautiful. I almost kept that one for myself, but I gifted that one. And then this one I made for me. And I love her. She's cute, huh? But yes, I, I'm very, very happy with, with this beanie. Um, I've made all of mine with a double folded brim just to give it some extra warmth. I guess you could, like, I guess I could wear it like this where it's a little bit more slouchy. But I don't know. I don't love that as much. I don't know. But anyway, this was very, very successful. And I found that once I got my correct gauge, I got my correct stitch counts, um, making it was really quick. I think I finished that first one after ripping it out and finding the correct gauge. I think I finished it in three days. Yeah, I mean, granted, I was working on it pretty diligently, but I think I finished it in about three days. This one, I think I finished in about like a week's worth of diligently knitting. And then after I made this one, I looked in my yarn stash to see what other non-superwash yarns I had. Um, I think I really like the combination of the non-superwash yarns with the Muscle Bro. For one, the gauge doesn't change as much and maybe I've just been scarred by it not fitting <laughs> very well, but I wanna make sure that for the most part, what I'm measuring and how it feels before blocking is how it's gonna stay. I don't want my beanies to stretch out. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know, I just spent so much like energy <laughs> thinking about this beanie that I, I just wanna make sure that it fits and that it stays a good fit. So I looked in my stash to see what other non-superwash yarns I had. And the one that I kept reaching for was my Wooly Knit uh, Merino Cone. I have several colors in the Wooly Knit Merino. And this is the first one that I pulled out. This is the Mollison colorway. It's um, it's a very oatmeal-y uh, neutral. It looks cool in some lights. It looks warm in other lights. There's some browns in here. It's pretty heathered. But yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful color. It's a beautiful um, neutral. And this one is a light, finger, light fingering weight yarn. So I used the counts for this and it turned out to be too small. So I ripped back and this one was more like a seven stitches per inch gauge. And um, when I made sure that my stitches were correct and everything, it ended up with a really, really nice, snug fit, like a hug for your head. It feels really, really nice. So then once this was done, 
I immediately wanted to cast on another one, but I didn't have a lot of non-superwash yarns in my stash. I, I did try the Merino from Knitting for Olive, but for whatever reason, I didn't love it as much. And then Knit Picks had a sale. So I thought, ooh, I wanna try Knit Picks palette because palette is a base that is very popular for like color work. I know that it is a yarn that comes in so many different colors. And so when they had that sale, I was like, ooh, I'm gonna get on that. And what I ended up with was this color. It's another heathered colorway. I think it's called Garnet Heather. But y'all, this is like the perfect red, like a perfect deep, I don't know, like a red wine color, but like make it cozy. I don't know. I have a crush on this color. <laughs> it is so pretty. It's such a pretty red. And it's and it's a perfect um like accessory red in that it doesn't it's not so bright that it makes you look clowny, but it's also just bright enough that it I don't know, it's like a good statement piece, I guess you could say. Oh, but it's a nice, it's a nice red. I really like it. And I was so excited when I got the yarn in the mail that I cast it on right away and I finished it in like three or four days. No joke. It's so quick. I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't stop. Oh, and the other thing about non-super wash yarns is that it blooms beautifully. Like, um, however it is when you're first knitting with it, when you block it, it somehow softens up a lot. It gets fluffier. I don't know. It's, it was, yeah. And for a beanie, I think that's really great. Especially if you like to wear beanies and you go like camping or you're walking the dog or you're outside and it's a little drizzly or whatever. Like it's great because it keeps you warm, but it's also a bit water resistant, water repellent. I don't know, it's non super wash, so the lanolin is still on it and the oil makes it so that, you know, your hair is not gonna get wet. <laughs> and that's really, really nice. So anyway, this was um, Muscle Barrel number four, which I really think that the palette, Knit Picks palette, yeah, it was it was nice, it was, it was really nice. And um, lastly, the most recently finished one is another Wooly Knit one. I had purchased this black yarn um, to make a sweater for myself a very long time ago. You can't really see it because, you know, I'm wearing black and the beanie is black. But yeah, I thought it would be, again, another nice neutral, like an everyday beanie that you can wear whenever. It's black, so it kind of goes with everything. And again, just the fit, the, the feel of this beanie is just like, it's amazing. I love it. Um, this one I started about a week ago and I finished it last night. Yeah. And even though it's black yarn because it is straight stockinette for rounds and rounds and rounds and rounds and rounds, I feel like it was very easy to knit. Yeah. Oh, so the other thing I wanted to mention is the cast on. Um, this one, like I said, I did the crocheted cast on for yeah the crocheted pinhole cast on this one and the tawny one that I made the first one and I didn't love how it looked I feel like it cinched in such a way that I don't know it made me feel uncomfortable to look at it I don't know what that means but it just it just made me feel really uncomfortable and awkward to look at it so I thought, okay, for these two, what I decided to do was a, um, a crocheted provisional cast on. So what I did was I chained the number of stitches that I knew that I needed. And instead of starting from the top of the crown and increasing, I started here, did a crochet provisional cast on and worked a decrease. Then I picked up the stitches on that chain that the chain was holding onto, the life stitches that the chain was holding for me, 
and then I worked the rest of the way up. Um, that was a much more enjoyable process because I wasn't increasing. I didn't have to, yeah, I, I, the increases never looked as nice as the decreases. And so I was happy to do two decreases instead of like starting from one end and, you know, going through to the other. So I did that for this one. It worked out really nicely. So for this one, I did the same thing. I did a crocheted like chain provisional cast on. But then I realized I don't like having to go and like pick up the stitches. Um, I don't mind picking up stitches, but it was just a lot. <laughs> so I thought to myself, is there an easier way to go about this? Is there a way that I can have two life cast on two sets of life stitches at a time instead of, you know, going back and having to pick up stitches? And I realized, yes, there is a method for doing that. It is called the Judy's Magic Cast On. And I know that typically you use one circular needle um, for that method. It's often used when you're doing a toe up sock. So you cast it on and you're working kind of like, like in the round on the same needle. So if I showed you, so if you have a circular, circular needle, you typically would cast on like this so that you have live stitches on both the front and the back needle. What I did instead was I took two sets of circular needles and I cast on um, the number of stitches that I needed on two different needles. So once I had the cast on on my needles, once I had the stitches on my needles, I just used one set to work the, the crown decreases and then I left the other life stitches on a second set of needles so that once I bound off with this, I could use this to keep going. And that worked really nicely when I did this beanie. And I think moving forward, that's the method I'm going to use because then I didn't have to pick up like a hundred plus stitches. Now the, the downside of doing it that way was that I did end up with a section. Well, one, um, I had a little knot where the slip stitch is. Wait, is that right? The slip knot? the initial slip knot that you make in order to do um, the Judy's Magic Cast On. I did have a little bit of a knot there. And around that area, because of that slip knot, it made it kind of loose. Like the, the, the tension of the stitches were, were pretty wonky. But I went back and what I did was I just um, evened out the tension. I, I tugged on the stitches a little bit to make sure that everything looked the same. And I tucked a little bit of the extra yarn in the inside of the beanie. And because this is non-superwash, I really don't think you can tell. I was looking for it to see if I could show you what it looked like, but I couldn't even find it. So obviously it wasn't that big of a problem. But yeah, I think that's what I want to do for my future muscle bro hats. Just use the Judy's Magic Cast On. And then you have two sets of life stitches and you're good to go. But yes, I think that's all I have to say about the Muscle Bros. I just love them. They're really great. Um, in order to achieve this, I guess, length um, where I can have a folded brim, I knit until about 20 inches from the cast on edge. Yeah, from the cast on. I knit until it was 20 inches and then I started the decrease. So the final blocked measurements of my Muscle Bros are about 23 to 24 inches from crown to crown. If you have any questions about that though, leave a comment below or you can look at my um, Ravelry pages because I have a page for each of my muscle bros. Okay, I, I kind of talked about the muscle bros. For, like what, what is that, like 25 minutes? Mm. You still hanging in there? Okay, now we're gonna switch gears to talk about socks. Oh my gosh, I have so many other, um, I have so many socks that I have made in the last several months, but I'm just going to talk about my more recently finished socks. Um, again, I, the, most of these are going to be gifted, so I will not have them with me to show you later, later. So I'll just show them to you now. The first set of socks that I want to share with you are my Dodger socks. I don't know if any of you guys are sports fans. 
I um, am not, but I do live in LA and I have many, many people in my vicinity who love sports and baseball in particular. And I was gifted a pair of tickets to go to a Dodgers game recently back in May. And so I wanted to make a matching set for me and one of my best friends. I don't have her socks with me, but I will show you my pair. And uh, let me put them on blockers real quick. And these have been worn, so they're a little tired, but ta-da! These are my daughter socks. I look very tired, actually, <laughs> and stretched out. But it is a, I made this out of Cascade Heritage. This is Royal Blue and Macadamia. Those are the colorways. And it's kind of, it's a semi-vanilla sock in that I followed um, the Vanilla Socks on Magic Loop pattern pretty loosely from K of the Crazy Sock Lady. But also I used the idea of the Treasure Toe Socks by Treasure Goddess, I think. Um, and in that her, the Treasure Toes socks is a three by one ribbed sock. And that's kind of what I did here. The cuff is 20 rounds of two by two. I did uh, seven rounds for the stripe of the contrast color, three rounds of the main, seven, three, seven. The total uh, number of rounds for the leg was I believe 65 or 70. I have um, a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. And then I did about 70 rounds for the foot before doing the toe in, uh, decreases. Um, I did a three by one rib on the top of the foot and then standard stuck in it on the bottom. And I gotta say, even though I like the final result, I did not like knitting this. I think it's the three by one. Yeah, I think it's the three by one. I didn't really like it. Even though the end result is really cute. Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't really a fan. But I had so much yarn left over. So I made two pairs with 100 grams of the main color and about like 25 grams of the, the contrast color. But I had purchased two skeins of the main color thinking that I was going to need 100 grams per sock. I don't know why I thought that. I never need 100 grams per sock. And my friend wanted shorty socks, so evermore, it really was not necessary to have two skeins of the royal blue. But because I did, I thought, okay, I'm gonna try this again and make a different pair. And this third pair that I made, yeah, I think this one's the winner. This one's my favorite one. Let me put them on blockers so you can see them. Mm -hmm. Ta-da! Much better. So the thing that I did not like about this pair was one, the three by one ribbing. The other thing that I did not like is that for whatever reason, even though I did about 70 rounds for the leg, it didn't feel long enough. I don't know if it's just the yarn. I don't know if it's the ribbing, but it just didn't feel long enough on my leg. I wanted it to be a little bit taller. So um, that was a problem. And then I also didn't like the toe. For whatever reason, it seemed like the toe was a little small. Like it looked a little bit strange. Um, there was something about it that felt a little bit off. So for this one, I decided to do a straight vanilla sock, which was a much more pleasant knitting experience. And I added little stripes before the toe decreases, which I think... Yeah, I think that made it much, much better. So I, oh, I also made it a little bit taller. So I think I did 80 rounds for the leg. Oh, I hope that's right. I don't know. You can check my Ravelry page um, to check the numbers. I did 20 rounds for sure of the two by two rib. I did the same thing. Um, I did 
And then I finished out the leg, same thing, slip stitch, heel flap and gusset. But when I got to the foot, I did some math and subtracted the number of rounds that I knew I would need <laughs> to do these little mini stripes and then started that. I don't know, I did math is really what I'm trying to say, but I'm not describing it very well. I'm so, so sorry. Um, these stripes though are five rounds not seven. So these stripes are a little bit wider. These are a little bit narrower, narrower, five stripes, three stripes, or five rounds, three rounds of the main color, another five round stripe, three rounds, and then the toe. So yeah, it's a little bit different, the stripes here on the leg than, than here on the toe. But again, I just think that this one was much better. So yeah, those are my Dodger socks. I'm very happy with them. I wouldn't mind making more, but yeah, I wonder if I'll be going to more Dodger games this season. And what do you say? Is it Dodgers games? Dodgers game or is it Dodger game? I am so sports illiterate. I hope I'm not sounding like a fool, but please correct me because I would like to learn. What do you say? Do you see Dodgers games or Dodger games? I don't know. Can you please teach me? Because I don't, I don't, I don't want to sound like an idiot. Anywho, those are my socks. The other pair that I made. Um, oh, so as I was making this, I was thinking to myself that I really wanted to make striped socks. I really enjoyed this part of making these socks. It was my favorite part. Something about um. Uh, like doing seven rounds of this and then three rounds of that, like like having my stripes be a way for me to keep track of where I have, how far I am on the sock. I don't know, something about that was really enjoyable. I really liked that. It kept me going. It kept me motivated to continue. So I thought I would make an entire sock with scraps on that, what, motif pattern? I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And this is what I came up with. Ta-da! These are my scrappy socks using the 2023 Oxide Advent Calendar from Hue Loco. Um, the main color here that I used throughout was her full 100 gram skein. I, th I think the color is called Varnish. And then I use like random minis in between from the advent. And I love them. They're so pretty. Each stripe is seven rounds plus three rounds of the main color in between. So how many is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, 70 rounds for the leg. And then one, two, three, four, five, 60 rounds for the foot before the toe decreases. And as you will notice, this is maybe my first finished pair of socks that is not using a heel flap and gusset. This, I did a shadow wrap heel, which I'm kind of obsessed with now. What I realized with the shadow wrap heel is that um, you don't have to count that much. So Earth Tones Girl has... Um, a tutorial for how to do a shadow wrap heel and that helped me a lot now I do mine a little bit differently I've, I've done the shadow wrap heel a couple of times now and I found a way a, a little bit of a modification that I really like maybe I'll talk about that in another video but for the sake of this video and for the length of the, for the sake of the length of this video I'll just say that I really enjoyed doing the shadow wrap heel and I really appreciated that because there's no gusset the, 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 the number of stitches that are on the leg and the number of stitches that are on the foot is the same, which means that, um, I mean, with this, it's a scrappy project, so it doesn't really matter. But when I've done self-striping yarns, um, it, it makes it a little bit neater. I don't have that weird pulling that happens like right around the gusset area. I know some people don't really care about that, but I kind of do if I'm being honest with myself. And so, yeah, I, I enjoy not having to worry about that. I also really like 
that the fit is a little bit more snug. I know that some people who have a higher instep, I think is what I've heard, um, like the heel flap and gusset, it fits better for them, that's great. But this shadow wrap heel actually fits really nicely for me and it fits fine. It fits fine. Um, it fits kind of snug and I kind of like that anyway. Um, and especially when I wear my socks inside my tennis shoes or something like that, I notice that it's, it doesn't like bunch up around my ankles as much because there's not as much fabric. So for my foot and for my daughter's foot, I think the shadow wrap heel is working out pretty good. So then I made this scrappy pair and I loved it. I just thought, oh, this is amazing. This is wonderful. And then I was on a striping kick. <laughs> so next, after that, I made... Um, so while I was making all of that, there was a yarn that I had in the back of my mind that I really wanted to use. Um, so earlier this year, I went to San Diego for a day trip and was able to visit a very cute yarn shop called, I think it's called Apricot Yarns down in San, Di San Diego. And, um, they had like the Zauber Ball sock yarns that are like self-striping, but it's, I think it's a European brand or a German brand and it it's self-striping, but it's more like a self ombre kind of a yarn. So it doesn't have these distinct stripes on there. It kind of has a gradient and it's really beautiful. And I've seen it and I wanted to use it. I thought, oh, this is amazing. I'm going to get it as like a souvenir to remind me of this wonderful trip. And I was originally going to uh, wait until the fall to use that yarn. But then I just kept thinking about it and I wanted to use it. And it was summer sock camp and I was like, ah, I really want to use this. <laughs> so I did, I caked it or I didn't cake it up. Um, it comes in like a, what is it called? Oh, like a gobstopper, gobstopper ball where it, it comes like already wound up in a ball. And um, I just started using it, but as I was using it, I realized I don't really like it. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't bringing me a lot of joy. I don't know why. Is it because the stripes weren't evident? Is it because it was a gradient? I don't know, but for whatever the reason, I wasn't loving it that much. So I looked through Instagram to see how other people had used their Zauber Ball crazy sock yarns. And the ones that I really, really loved were ones that were striped with other yarn. So I think what people do is they get two Zauber Ball sock yarns that are like different colorways. And then they stripe it together so that one set of stripes are on like ombre or like they're on a gradient and then the other set of stripes are on another gradient and it, it just creates this very beautiful effect that's very interesting to look at it kind of catches your eye it keeps an interest as you go through the sock i don't know it just is very very beautiful and i would love to have done that but alas i only have one zawarol <laughs> yarn so i didn't really have the option to um stripe in like two, but I did have a neutral. And so that's what I did. I striped in a neutral, which in this case is like a dark gray. And I switched it every five rounds. And I love it. Ta -da! So as you can see, these are fraternal this is a fraternal pair. It's not identical. This one I started with, uh, this one, the main color is the gray. And then I like contrast colored in the Zauber Ball. And this one I used the Zauber Ball as the main color. And then I striped in with the neutral. I think these might be my favorite socks that I've ever made. <laughs> um, so the first pair that I made was this one, I think, or the first sock that I made from this pair was this one, I think. And I had done it with all gray stripes in between. And it was good. It was 
it was cute. Um, but I also had this burgundy that I had wanted to use and I wasn't sure, but I was initially going back and forth. Okay, do I want the burgundy? Do I want the gray? I ended up going with the gray, but I really, really, really wanted to add a splash of burgundy in here and I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know if it would work out or not, but I figured eh, I'll go ahead and just try it with the second one. Um, all of my socks, by the way, are cuffed down. I don't do toe up socks, even though I had mentioned and I alluded to toe up socks previously, all of my socks are made on magic loop with a US one chow goo red lace needle, 32 inches, and I make them cuff down. Because of that, for my second sock, I started at the cuff, I added a couple of burgundy rounds in there, and I, I think I about like finished the leg, and I took a step back and looked at it, and I thought, yeah, I really, really like it. I like it a lot. So for my first pair, I actually ripped back. I unpicked the toe, and I actually ripped back to right here so that I can add the burgundy stripes into my first sock. And I have no regrets. This too is also done with the shadow wrap heel. And I love it. I love it a lot. So yeah, there are more socks that I can share with you guys. I have several on the needles right now. And unfortunately, they're not within reach. So I cannot, like, I won't actually show them to you today. But yeah, that's what I've been up to. It is Summer Sock Camp 2024. Uh, Kay Litton of The Crazy Sock Lady hosts um, Summer Sock Camp every summer. I think it's her fifth year now. She started in 2020, I believe. And this is my first year participating in Summer Sock Camp. Oh, and it's been so exciting. I don't know why, because I've been knitting socks all year, but yeah, something about that has been really, really fun. Um, I'm hoping that I will continue catching you guys up on the things that I'm working on. I also have some blankets, some scrappy blankets that I'm working on, but I'll save those from next for next time as well. Um, as a treat though, if you have stuck around until the very end of this video, thank you. And as a treat, let me show you the end result of one of the last things that I talked about the last episode, which was my daughter's birthday dress. At the time, it was a work in progress. I had shared with you guys my vision for her birthday dress. It's crazy that it's been a year now, which means she's been wearing this for about a year and it is now time for me to make her next birthday dress. But I know a lot of you guys were so encouraging about the dress. So I wanted to show you what it looked like. So this was for my daughter's fourth birthday. I'm not gonna go into details about it, but I did a, a pico edge at the bottom and it turned out really great. She loved it. She wore it all year round. Even when it was cold, she wore like a long sleeve shirt underneath and, and wore it. Um, it still fits her, even though I think there's a bit about an inch or two of negative ease, but it still fits her really well. And I would highly recommend making your kiddos birthday stuff. I mean, if you want to, and if they want it, I don't know, do whatever you want. <laughs> but this was hers and she loved it so much that she asked for a birthday dress this year. So I'm thinking about what I want to do. I haven't made a garment in a very long time. Most of the things that I've been making as of late are socks. Um, they are just wonderful canvases. Like they're small canvases for you to play around with color and play around with different techniques. And so I've been loving, loving socks right now. But since homegirl wants a, a dress, I guess I need to make her a dress. I mean, it is her birthday. So, you know. But anyway, thank you guys for sticking around. Thank you guys for coming back to see me again here on this channel. I am so thankful for all of you. Um, you know who you are. I know that several of you reached out to me during my year long hi hiatus and you were checking in, letting me know that you missed me, letting me know that 
um, you missed my videos, making sure I was okay, <laughs> all of those things. You guys are so kind um, and so gracious. So thank you. I am hopefully back. I don't know. We shall see. But for now, I was just too excited about my projects to not share them with you. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully it won't be in 2025. Hopefully it'll be <laughs> earlier than that. But anyway, have a great rest of the day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.